This is a video to explain why an absolute value function when it's graphed will usually look like this, or it will look like this. A linear absolute value function, that is. Why does it look like that? Well, an absolute value, as you probably already know, we take the number line 0 and we plot x on there, and we plot minus x on there, the distance to 0 in both cases is x. And absolute value always talks about the distance to x. So the absolute value of x equals the absolute value of negative x. Both the absolute value of x and negative x is equal to x. So instead of just x, it could be something more complicated. It could be x minus 3. And the absolute value of x minus 3 equals the absolute value of negative x minus 3. Which equals x minus 3, whatever that is. So put in whatever you want for x. The key though is to remember that everything inside the absolute value function can be flipped to the negative and it is still the same thing. It is still the distance to zero. So x minus 3 is the same as negative x minus 3, which as you know would be expressed like this. Very important to understand that sort of thing. This is just the minus sign put through and the uh, brackets taken out, so it ends up looking like this, which might also look like this. So, being able to recognize how these things can flip themselves around or how the negative sign can apply to all of the contents as a whole here inside the absolute value function is important. So, back to the graph. <clears throat> if I graph a very simple function, and I'm going to graph y equals x. And you know that y equals x is going to be a straight line. Let's, uh, let's put a color in here. Let's see if my pink pen has, ah, yes it does have ink. There's y equals x and that goes on forever and therefore the range is, well right now from 0 to infinity and the domain is from 0 to infinity. So I would extend y equals x also goes down through here, but I'm not going to do that just yet. If it was just y equals x, I would do that. But if I'm trying to graph the function y equals the absolute value of x, and we take what we've learned here where the absolute value of x is also the absolute value of negative x, then that also equals the absolute value of negative x. So, if we take a point here, let's just call that 2, 2. y equals x, 2, 2. Yeah, that makes sense. However, if it was described this way, y is the absolute value of x, then negative 2 over here, the absolute value of negative 2 is 2. So if x equals negative 2, the absolute value is still y. So we will find that there will be a line on the other side. Let's see if I can find another color here. There's green. Where all of the values, the absolute value of the y, or sorry, of the x, will still equal y. Absolute value of negative 2 is 2. And that's why this point is on our function line. And so we have a v here that's a mirror image around some sort of a an axis. In this case, the axis happens to be the uh, x equals zero, also known as the y-axis, is the point of reflection, we'll call it, because it's the same on both sides. And you remember probably from Math 8 or something what a reflection is. So this is why we get the v-shape. We get the v-shape because all the stuff that's negative, that's a reflection of the stuff that's positive, when it becomes an absolute value, the result is a positive number. So, I should also point out that these functions do not go down into the negative because it's the absolute value of x and the absolute value of all numbers is always positive. And that's why it's all above the x-axis. There's x-axis, there's y. So, that's a bit of a rule here. Um, when it's the absolute value of x or when x shows up 
in the absolute value function uh, and there's no negative number in front or anything like that and it's probably always above the x-axis. So that's your explanation of why it looks like a V.